Hey wrestling fanatics, welcome to the Queen's Takeover, part of the Belly Up Podcast Network. Thank you for joining the Queens of Belly Up Wrestling as we take over the podcast world. It's your girl Kat, aka the Texas Sports Queen. We also have the Carolina Boss Lady, Kayla. Hello. And our resident adjuster, Jolie. Sup. OMG. What a week this has been in the WWE. And I don't see any other way but to start this off, but then let's go let's go to Monday night when Becky Lynch, the man, shocks the world again with her announcement that she is stepping away to become a mother. We don't need to go into all the details because this will explain itself. Kayla, your thoughts. Um I'm really happy for her. Um and also as far as Asuka getting the championship. Um, the whole segment between them, it made me cry. It's like, you're going to go be a warrior and I'm going to go be a mother. And Oscar's was like, a mother, you know, I mean, just, it was just so much emotion for me and I'm just so happy for her. Um, and as far as I'm happy for Seth, cause obviously he's the father. Um, but Seth, I don't know what you had going on Monday night raw, but I mean, I don't know. If you were, you know, in a way, the memes and everything, they're just like, hey, he's rethinking it and all this stuff. And, I mean, <laughs> coming out with his hair ruffled and poor Murphy's over there looking at him like, what the hell is going on with you, man? And then it was just like, he didn't even phase him. Like, you know, <laughs> Alistair Black, you know, literally ended up and he just turns his head and just looks at him and turns back. I mean, it's just, <laughs> but I, I had to share that because I thought that was hilarious. It was just like, Seth was like. Man, I knew I should have wore a condom. Why didn't I? You know, something, you know? Because, I mean, he looked like he just, he had his hair ruffled and everything. Like, you know, he was just, like, second-guessing it. But as far as Becky's announcement, um, given the title, or Asuka, not given the title, Asuka actually climbed up the ladder, not knowing really what it was except for to cash in. But knowing that the fact, um, I've seen a lot of stuff people say that they don't think, Oscar deserves it. Well, guess what? I'm going to back it up. She does. Um, mm-hmm. cause in that ladder match, honestly, there was nobody in that ladder match that honestly really that do that did deserve it more than Oscar did. And she's worked up to that. So, um, congratulations to Oscar, um, becoming a grand slam champion. Mm-hmm. Um, and also congratulations to, the man Becky Lynch and her ruffled up fiance Seth Rollins. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like when you look at Seth on Monday, it's like half he was like kind of hungover from the match with Drew, and then it's like also you, it, it's like half that, and then half like shocked about Becky's announcement. So you really couldn't take like what the hell was going on with him that night. Yeah, exactly, and it's like, um, and. In the war, in in regards to Asuka, it's like from what I heard, she did not know anything about this. So the reaction that she had was like pure and it was genuine. And I swear, if I see one more tweet about someone saying that they just gave the title to the Asuka, I'm gonna blow up on them I'm because right it's you. like no. If you look, if you listen to what Becky said on Monday, she. W- the match was for so much more than just an opportunity of the championship. It was for the title itself. So if actually people would listen to Becky's words, they would know that she didn't just didn't get handed the title. But no, nah, but um, yeah, it's kind of a crazy, it, it, it's kind of like a crazy time because for the last year and a half, Becky's been the face of WWE, but these things can't be helped. Congratulations to Becky. Congratulations to Seth. And it's like, yes, she's going to be gone for a while and everything, but this is just like an incredible moment in in their lives. All right, Julie. I have been a Becky Lynch fan since 2015. She made me fall back in love with wrestling again. She brought a passion and an energy that needed to be infused. All of them did. The four horsemen. Mm-hmm. And I don't care what Ronda Rousey or Shayna Baszler, Jessamine or Marina 
say about it. They might be the four MMA horsewomen, but these four women exploded what AJ Lee, the Bellas, and Paige were doing. Mm-hmm. They Almost five years ago. Yeah, they made. While they made the spark, they brought the gunpowder. Mm-hmm. And even though Becky wasn't always in the spotlight, you saw the fans gravitating to her more than they did to Sasha, more than they did with Charlotte, and more than they did with Bailey. There was just something about. Becky that everybody gravitated to. I wish Rebecca Quinn and Colby who doesn't know how to wrap it up Lopez. Um, all the Wonder Mits in the World ch- children are a great thing. I've got nothing against kids. <laughs> Don't have them. Um, <laughs> but that's not a personal choice. I wanted a family. It just never happened. It still can happen. That's just not right now. Um, Same. But it's just like... For me, personally, I have no investment for Monday Night Raw. I love Drew. I love... Um, Liv and Ruby, but there's just... No real reason for me to watch anymore and I think that you know that's going to be for a lot of people too and Mm -hmm. I want to go on the thing about Asuka Asuka did not know Joe, Tom and Byron did not know nobody knew except for Vince what Ah. was happening nobody knew except for Vince what was happening they actually kept this from what I'm being told very, very hush-hush behind the scenes. Yes, there was some jackass who did release that that she was making a huge announcement, and most likely it was a pregnancy. With that being said, and I'm on the heels of you two ladies, anybody that says that Asuka does not deserve that title can grab the biggest dildo that they can find, lube it up with habanero hot sauce and shove it straight up their ass. <laughs> because Asuka... Look, let's look at the feuds that Asuka has had. Her feud with Becky was probably one of the best. Her feud with Charlotte was probably one of the best. I think that Asuka is the flip side of the coins when it comes to Charlotte and Becky. Mm -hmm. She knows how to wrestle those two women. She knows how to bring those two women out of whatever it is. I can't wait for when, you know, they finally let the real Shayna Baszler come out and play to see how she fares against somebody who has the striking and speed ability that Asuka has. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter that Shayna has been raised in a cage. Chi- uh, Japanese wrestling is a lot different than MMA, and it's a lot different than WWE. And if they let Asuka tap into that style of wrestling that she's used to, especially when she was Kana, then I think you know it's going to be bringing forth some some fantastic feuds. Now, okay. I'm gl- I will say this: I'm glad that Becky got pregnant because at least now until next year Nia Jax cannot hurt her. (laughs) And, and now comes to the, the, the one thing that the entire wrestling fandom of the four horsewomen have been arguing. Who is the favorite auntie? (laughs) Who is the godmother? And who's the one that spoils them? I believe that the favorite auntie will be Bailey. I believe the mm-hmm. spoiler will be Sasha. And the godmother yep. will be Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And I will say... All right. I, I will say seeing all three of them post support on Twitter and on Instagram, it wow. honestly made my heart swell because it was the one time where they stepped out of character. 
Mm-hmm. And again, that's something that the MMA four horsewomen don't understand. These four women are friends and best friends. Right. All out of the business. And I can't wait for, you know, when Rhonda comes back, because you know she's going to come back. I don't care what anybody says. Rhonda is coming back. And yes, you know what? I did make the joke that Becky Lynch did beat Rhonda at another thing. And you know what? I don't care if it's tasteless. Fuck off. (laughs) I thought it was hilarious. You know, people bitching about that, right? Like, you know, oh, my God, that's so tasteless. Dude, it's a fucking joke. You guys make fucking jokes about Becky's abortions or her supposed abortion years ago, but we can't make a joke about Rhonda not getting pregnant? The woman has all the fucking money in the world. Take your egg, take his sperm, boom, bam, is done. You you can do it science with the science. (laughs) I just made the fucking joke that, you know, Becky and Seth just... Did it raw and shit happened. <laughs> oh man. Okay. But but okay. but I, okay. I will say this. I will say this before we wrap this up with the whole Becky and Seth thing. Okay. I, I did love when, you know, Ray comes up to Seth and like he goes, you know, I know we're not really friends <laughs> right now, but congratulations, man. You're gonna be a great father. I know you will. And he just looks at him like Ehh! and walks Ehh. away all caveman style and he goes, What a, what a dick! dick. Yeah, I that... was like, that was the the best fucking line, and Buddy Murphy fucking tweeted out a meme of him and Seth, and of Jon Snow and the red haired wildling man that I cannot remember from Game of Thrones, and he goes, "I knew I saw this before. I was cracking up with that one too." <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, I got one more thing to ask y'all before we before we move on, um, Jolie. Did you see those comments from Jim Cornette? Dear Mr. Cornette, your balls <laughs> are shriveled like raisins. Your dick looks like a golf pencil. <laughs> Becky has more of a career that you'll never have because you are a racist, misogynistic, tiny, tiny man. And the fact that you have the likes of Joey Ryan, the man that puts a lollipop down to his balls, pulls it out, licks it, and then shoves it in somebody else's mouth, speaking out against you, that means you've hit rock bottom. Lay off the crack pipe, you piece of shit, and if I ever see you, I will shove that dildo with habanero sauce up your ass. Have a nice day. Oh, God. (sighs) Yeah, it's like, when I heard those comments, it's just like, who the hell are you to judge her? Because it's like every, every woman, like yeah, I don't have kids. I don't have kids either. It hasn't happened yet. If it happens for me and my husband, it'll be through adoption probably. But um, every woman knows when it's their time to have kids, when it's right in their life. And yes, she is the face of the company. Has been for a year and a half. If she wants to go out and have kids, even if she's making a million dollars a year, it is her God-given right. And he has absolutely nothing to say about it. Hey, not well, only, not, not, hold on, not uh-huh. only that, but the fact that, you know, he, the way he said it, uh-huh. and the, the thing that he could actually get away with saying it. And then you've got the likes of Brad Shepard saying, thank God she's off our TV. It's like, she brings in ratings. But here's the thing, like, you know, yeah, you bash her, but I don't see you guys bashing Roman. Why oh, is, yeah. Why is it a double fucking standard? Oh, uh, what was it? What, it it's like, what was with the, the Easy Bake Oven reference? Seriously? <laughs> okay, I guess, Kayla, I guess you I've never ju- seen a vagina in a while. I don't know. <laughs> Kayla, you want to jump in here? <laughs> uh, t- I don't know, but just... Um, just the different things I've just basically seen. It's just like, you know, Jolie said, just, you know, even when you said it, when it's your time, it's your time. And, you know, screw everybody that thinks, you know, you know, that they think this is not a good thing for Becky, you know? Okay. So what we're as fans, we're going to miss her. Okay. It, but you know, I have a lot of respect for her. If she was ready to be a mom, ready to start a family, you know, ready to go be with uh, Seth Rollins and, you know, live their happily 
ever life. Um, I'm very happy for him and very, and you know what? Like Seth said on Instagram, he posted, what did he say? Which was really sweet. I have to find it. Hang on. Um, he, what was the pregnancy test of her showing pregnant? And she's like, I took a few moments after we got this, our best new of our lives. I don't think I could have captured anything more beautiful. I can't put words into how much it means to me. Thank you so much for all your support last couple of days. And then he says, December can't come soon enough. And then in the moment that, and then Becky basically posted like, I love you. And it's just like, um, I'm very excited for them. So I don't want December to come because I'm not ready for Christmas. It'll be here too quick. But in their, <laughs> but in their sake, um, I'm excited just as much as I are to see if it's going to be a girl or a boy. And please, Seth, Becky, I'm begging you. Please do not bring another Birdie Joe into this world. Find a decent name. Yes, do not name it Quinoa, Rebecca. <laughs> I mean, give him a good name. Because I do have to say, I give kudos to Ms. and Marie's. Both of their baby girls' names are awesome. I love them. Oh, yeah. Both very good. Um, Bree, Birdie Joe, uh, I ain't digging it. Please do not name your new, your another child something off the wall. And Nikki Bella, as far as you, don't name it something off the wall. It'd probably be like, <laughs> it'd probably be like Cabernet or Savion. Um, or but- Entriuma or something. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> all I know is all I know is whether it's a boy or girl, this their child, Becky and Seth's child, is gonna be who one fire of a personality because it's like she's pure Irish. I looked it up. He's actually Irish, German, and Armenian descent, and so it's just like, like wait, ooh, wait, 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 wait. He he's Irish, Armenian, and, and German. Just, Where yeah. the fuck did Lopez come from? It's actually his um, stepfather's last name. Okay. And, but also, I also don't want to put point something out, Mr. Cornette. We are in the middle of a fucking pandemic. And you know what? If Becky was going to take some time off away from the audience, when there is no audience, well, this is the time to do it. So, again, kindly go fuck yourself, as, okay. as the Iron Sheik would say. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> <sighs> okay, so... Moving forward, Asuka, the new Raw Women's Champion on Monday night. So, Jolie, how, okay, so how is this going to affect the women's division going forward? Women's division has literally been turned on its head. They have lost uh, probably one of the biggest locker room leaders, especially for the Raw brand. Um, They've lost one of the biggest locker room reader, uh, leaders on all brands. Um, from what everybody, what I've been reading uh, from backstage, it's Bailey has been one of the big ones on SmackDown, and Becky's been the big one on Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this would honestly be the most perfect time for them to actually bring back Sarah. Yeah. Um, I think this would be a good time to even possibly um, bring up Io Shirai. Um, because, again, that, that just makes me salivate at the fact that they could have a faction with Io, Kyrie, and Asuka running rampant over that division. Because could you imagine um, Io and Kyrie going after the tag titles? against and it's 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 just it's just salivating at this because you know it, it's just amazing what those three women could do together um it you're gonna have the likes of Liv morgan having to step up you're gonna have to have natty and uh natty step up mm-hmm. um nia jacks can just step away um look i have no love towards nia jacks in ring I have no issues with her out of ring. I think she has an awesome personality. I just think she's shitty in ring and really needs to learn that being a um, a legacy and having famous cousins doesn't give you the right to be in the ring. Um, I mean, again, she did some seriously fucked up shit in her match against Kyrie Sane, both matches. So, 
Yeah. So I'm still, I still have issues with her. Um, but yeah, you're going to have to have the likes of Liv Morgan, who apparently seems to uh, like getting beat by blondes. <laughs> Oh, um, oh, but God. I will say this about um, that match a couple weeks ago, because we really didn't touch on it. Oh, yeah. um, the match against Charlotte Flair, and when she lost against Charlotte, everybody on Twitter was, oh, my God, she's buried. Oh, my God, she's buried. Motherfuckers, it's called storytelling. You bitch when they don't do it. You bitch when they do it. Take a might all. For the love of fucking Christ, take a mitel. This women's division has the chance to become better mm-hmm. in some aspects, though something is missing. It also has the chance of possibly maybe introducing a manager. Because there's rumors that a certain Tuesday night host might want to come back. To manage. Yeah, I did hear. I, and, I did hear a little rumble about that. And I don't know if she wants to manage a woman, but I think you know she could be a good manager. And you know, especially if another loudmouth comes back to be a manager for Naya, <laughs> I would love to see Renee managing maybe Liv Morgan. I think you know. I would love to see her on Raw more. I, I, I will straight up say this. I miss Renee Young on commentary. I hate I all the men. Um, I'm actually been very, very pleasantly pleased uh, with the NXT staff. I love the fact that they brought back Morrow and they've got Beth. I love the fact that Samoa Joe is now back on commentary. I love him. He is hilarious. And I love the fact that the king has been pushed away because apparently, I think they listen to us because it's, it's just like two, three straight weeks that the king has not been on commentary. Mm-hmm. It's a, it's a it's actually refreshing. Oh, because I love Joe is a heel, but he actually gives you such a better perspective. Mm-hmm. So like I love his perspective, but getting back on point, that's okay. getting off track. Yeah. Um. The women definitely have large, a large personality to fill. Yeah. You've got Charlotte shit stirring wherever she goes. So oh. she's a, we will get to that. We will definitely. get to that. <laughs> but I mean, like, even with, even on, on NXT, she was shit stirring between, like, everybody. So, um, yeah, it's just. Everybody kept saying that Becky Lynch was the, the next Stone Cold. No, she was the next Becky Lynch. And I've always, from where I've come from, it's always the next man up mentality. And I can't wait to see what these women are given with that next woman up mentality. Especially if they bring up the likes of Rhea or an Eo or even a Mia Yim or Candice LeRae. Which I don't think they'll bring up Candice. No. But, yeah, I just, I honestly, there's a ginger size hole missing, and, you know, yeah. It's <laughs> it just, it's, it's, I honestly am excited, but sad because this is an exciting time, but we're going to be missing out on matches that would have been. Fantastic. I mean, that we yeah. could have those matches down the line, but it's like we all wanted them now. Yeah. It's kind of like a blessing and a curse at the same time, too, because it's like it's a curse because it's like we're missing such a polarizing figure on Monday night heading the women's division. But it's also a blessing because it gives these other women to step up and try, not actually, but it's like to like fill, try to fill the role and fill the spotlight and everything and a couple more a couple more women that i can actually see getting more of a role in everything like this um number one bianca she's oh, up yeah. on raw she's up she's up on raw already so it's like you could definitely throw her like into the mainstream matches with all this and actually um since her little faction has a little bit of rumblings these days and everything hell get the lead in some singles action <laughs> i mean it's like her it's like 
like her personality enough is like already fiery and temperate and has a fiery temper and everything like that. So it's just like, hell, get her into some singles action here. But it's like, yeah, it's just, it's definitely like you said, it's just like, there's going to be chances for everybody to try to get in now. And it's just like, Asuka's leading the way. Yeah, they're going to have Shayna in there eventually with her. And then it's just like, oh, everyone needs, everyone's going to have to get a chance in there somehow. But, Okay, all right. Kayla, what you thinking? Um, like Julie has said, you know, with Becky gone now, um, women division definitely has to step up. Um, but it does give everyone an opportunity to maybe shine a little bit more um than what they have. Like um Natty, she she's been buried at the bottom for a while, randomly pop up out of nowhere. Um, I think this would be an opportunity for her, maybe, you know, get some more TV time, maybe get some more matches in there. Um, and as far as pretty much everybody on the roster, um, I haven't officially gotten, gr- uh, have her grown on me yet. Um, but Bianca Belair, I'm kind of excited, maybe give her some more matches. Maybe, like you said, put Zelina Vega in there because, I mean, she's got it. I mean, she can wrestle. We've seen it. Um, but as far as anybody on there, I kind of want to, you know, just see some different matches, more TV time. Iconics can just go bye-bye. So help me they get the tag team titles on Monday. I'm going to cry and riot against Monday Night Raw. Um, <laughs> I will. I will stop watching Raw. I, I will. If they get those titles back, I will stop watching Raw. Um, but right now would be a good opportunity for everybody until we wait. And also it kind of. Um, I saw something er- um, earlier. Somebody had already predicted a WrestleMania that when Becky does come back, it's probably going to be against Shayna Baszler. You know, an actual real match to show who's the better. Like I said, it's just rumored. Um, but I think there's a lot of matches right now that could be possibly built up, but we won't get to see them until later on. And, um... Women's division right now is pretty much taken over by the queen, the NXT champion, Charlotte Flair, because you want to think about it. We'll get to it later, but she just pops up out of nowhere. Yeah, it's like she's pulling triple duty <laughs> all over the place. It's like it's like she, she can't stay still. It's like bing, 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 bing. Exactly. Bing, bouncing back and, and forth between shows. And then Io Shirai would be a good combination to add to Kairi Sane and Asuka as well, because I think that would be amazing to see those three as a tag team. Um, and I'm going to go as far as another woman before we um, end it here. I miss Renee, like Jolie said. I miss Renee on commentary so much. And I kid you not, every time she's on Raw or she's on SmackDown, you know, interviewing, like, I will sit there, Renee! I get so excited because, <laughs> you know, I got excited when I saw her interviewing um, Daniel on Tuesday. And it, like I said, she was the voice in and even when her and Corey was going at it, she, she took her a while, but then when Corey would, you know, say something to her, she would fight right back. Oh yeah. But, and I loved it. And I loved her on commentary. So it would really be great to see her back in the WWE other than just backstage and random appearances here and there. Cause uh, she would definitely be a good manager if she decided to do so. Yeah. I want to make oh, yeah. about Charlotte Flair. She's like herpes. She pops up when you least expect her to. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh my god. Oh, and it's like a, I thought like a, something else was a Zelina and everything. You definitely know she's like, like got the chops and everything. If she can even hurricane Ron or her own husband. Because <laughs> I remember back from NXT. <laughs> yeah, that too. But coming with Zelina in the ring, the last time I saw her in the ring, she was getting chased by Hornswoggle. <laughs> I, no, no, no. no she had that uh she had that match with the uh, bianca oh that's right well that i'm sorry her being chased by hornswoggle still sits in my mind i'm sorry <laughs> that was hilarious i think that was probably one of the funniest parts of that rest uh, that royal rumble but one of my favorite memories of zelina vega in ring was her and uh andrade versus cena and becky that had to be one of the probably one of the spe- most special moments for not only for uh, Becky Lynch but for Andrade to get that nod and Selena to get that nod to work with a great like that. So exactly. 
Alrighty. So, we started off the week on Sunday with Money in the Bank. And the finale of the event was, of course, the Money in the Bank ladder matches at corporate headquarters. And it was definitely one, definitely the most unique one we've ever seen before. And it was crazy. It was wild. Food fights. Pop, people popping up all over the place. And it was actually, like, unbelievable to watch and everything. Oh, man. Sorry. So, what, Jolly? Uh, that money in the bank was probably... It, it was short, and but it was probably one of the funniest things I had watched. I mean, just like you said, like the little cameos and the the food fight. Oh my god, just and then poor Rey Mysterio getting choked out by Shayna and then getting <laughs> smashed by by Otis and Nia and then that that weird ass interaction between Nia and Otis when he was eating the hoagie. Like what the that hell? Was, what that was that? crazy. That was absolutely crazy. So, but Kate, so, but uh, Kayla, what was your what was your overall uh, feeling over the 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 ladder matches themselves? The ladder match itself. I thought it was kind of entertaining. <laughs> um, <laughs> like we said, it was, you know, it was entertaining because you know it just kept you guessing a little bit. Um, it was funny thing about um, the whole. Asuka, like everyone's entrance comes out and mom's like, where's Asuka? And she says, what? She's just going to randomly just jump up out of nowhere. Next thing you know, she jumps off the banister and just takes them all out. She's um, like holding onto the sledge. <laughs> exactly. Dancing. She was dancing. Yes. Um, <laughs> but it was quite entertaining. Like I said, then once they, and then uh, I think a funny part in there was when Corbin threw that weight through the mirror and he just stopped and looked at it like, Oh, that's going to come out of my check. <laughs> How much am I going to get fined for that? <laughs> but, um, no, it was rather entertaining. And then poor AJ gets the weight, and he's like, come on, help me. And they and Otis just looks at him like, eh, I ain't helping you, you know. Um, and then I do have to alit, um, admit poor Ray getting choked out by Shayna Baszler kind of made my night. But you see, the funny thing is, on Monday Night Raw, he talked about everything but that and my mom's like we well, he's talking about everything but you know getting choked out by Shayna I said would you be proud to say you got choked out by a female right <laughs> <laughs> but no above all it was very entertaining um I still loved the fact that I felt kind of bad because Otis couldn't climb the ladder and I'm like okay this is gonna be great and then it got up to where Corbin and Oscar was climbing and then Oscar just like eh boots him off well, and then like, yeah because like Corbin was trying to stop her from getting her briefcase I'm like going dude it's two briefcases up there mm -hmm. <sighs> but then as far as the briefcase just magically falls down in Otis's hands it was just like Otis you won you know so above all I think it was a really good match it was short like normal yeah. but it was it was rather entertaining so um it was definitely poor Ray Mysterio and Aleister Black for getting thrown off the roof. It'll be okay though. Yeah, Good. it's like there was. Yeah, I, I I love how there was wanting wanted posters the next day for uh, Corbin for murder or attempted murder. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! So it's like Jolly. I know you said like a little bit already, but it's like, what was your overall impression of everything on that? The WWE has definitely found a niche in cinematic matches. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't have to be in every pay-per-view event, um, but it was definitely probably something that made me laugh, made my friends laugh. Uh, I think one of my, my most memorable moments is when, they, when AJ and Brian <laughs> crashed in the McMahon's office, <laughs> and then they fixed the chairs. And they're like, we're like, sorry, sorry, sorry. And then he just puts on hand sanitizers after they leave. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck? Um, I think uh, Asuka honestly made that match for me. Because, like, she was just, like, 
in the elevator dancing, and then she was hiding, and then she snuck out. She didn't get into the food fight, and poor Dana Brooke gets the wrong briefcase, and then Steph, <laughs> Steph McMahon pops up like, what the hell are you doing? No, oh, wrong briefcase, honey. <laughs> <laughs> I get. And then, and then just Carmella just plows her with her own picture, and then she gets falls on her ass, <laughs> and then she gets thrown into a Coke machine. But honestly, I will say, like, Asuka kicking off Corbin was the second highlight of my night. The first was watching poor Paul Heyman just get food thrown right at him. I, that was, I was like, what the hell? Okay, I'm for this <laughs> food fight. Food fight. Like, this was honestly memorable, <laughs> despite it being short. Yeah. Um... The overall pay-per-view was short in regardless, but it mm-hmm. started off with the tag team titles. Awesome match. Definitely. Um, the match with Tamina and Bailey was pretty good. Um, I don't care what Brian Alvarez said, as you heard in the Jester's Court last week. So <laughs> it's like the matches were to the point. Mm-hmm. They got... Even the Seth and Drew match, that was That was fantastic. killer. That was a fucking clinic. So it's like, you know, I like the shorter pay-per-view. Um, and something something I read somewhere said that uh, Vince is thinking about scaling back the pay-per-views, at least for now. And so it's like, okay. But if they keep doing like the, like what they've been doing, I, I think they've definitely got... Um, a niche with the cinematic matches. Definitely have something going. And can we? Can I also mention like the Braun and Bray match and everything? The mind games that Braun was playing on Bray Wyatt. It was like awesome. <laughs> that was that was a that was like what like a ten minute match. That wasn't that long of a match, was it? Mm mm. Ah. But yeah, the the mind games, and it, we saw this from the start. How Bray has been overpowering the mind games, and now they're saying that. Then I saw like a fan, a fan. I don't know if it's real or fan made, but there is a poster online for Backlash, and it had half of the bronze face with the sheet mask, and half of Bray as the fiend. Ooh, and it's like you know, I, I just it, he is just been so calculating in the, the the style match with, with Bray Wyatt. Like, I can't wait to see what happens next. Yeah. It's like, like you said, the mind games. The funny thing is, like, with the mind games, he, he thought Otis was playing a trick on him on SmackDown. It's like, <laughs> Otis isn't that smart. <laughs> and I, I love Otis, but like, I, I think he's going to try to find a way to use that for the tag titles. All right, so let's go ahead and se- all right, so let's go ahead and segue to that and everything. So yes, on the other flip side of the money in the bank, we had the men's ladder match that Otis did end up winning. Uh, obvious choice? Hell no. Oh, wonderful choice. It, I mean, it was definitely had a feel good factor to it. Okay, so all right, so Jolly, so go ahead and continue what you were thinking about that. Yeah, I, I read somewhere that they think that you know. It just says to go for the championship. It doesn't actually specify which championship on your brand. So, I don't see him beating Braun Strowman. I think that um, that storyline with Bray is going to last a while longer. So, um, I could honestly see maybe him either using it to go for the tag titles or somehow, and this came to me the other night, and I really didn't watch the whole segment with uh, Sonya and Dolph. Because after Becky's announcement, I only really watched SmackDown for Charlotte and mm-hmm. Sasha and Bailey, um, Just because like, I just wasn't into it. Yeah. Um, I'll get back into it. I mean, I, wa- I'll wa- I watched NXT because I want to see what's happening there. Especially with Killer Cross. Kerry and Cross. And <laughs> Scarlet, Tick but um, tuck. but yeah, no, it's um. I think maybe Dolph is going to trick Otis 
and have him challenge him for a match for the briefcase. It was just someone that came to me like, you know, w- would they do that again? Because I think they've done that before. They have. I just think he's either going to use it for the tag titles or somebody's going to do some underhandedness and uh, take it from him. Well, whoever that person ends up being will have the most heat on them ever because it's like yeah half of twitter doesn't want didn't want otis having it because they think that he's gonna waste it but the other half of twitter loves otis and so like whoever tries to trick him out of it is gonna like have an enormous amount of heat on him but it's like yeah, in the past and everything, the money in the bank has always been for, like, the world titles and everything. And if they do, like, a one-off and let him use it to go after the tag titles, so what? So be it. Nothing in the WWE is normal these days. So it's just, like, if there's a one-off to let a guy go after the tag titles, so what? That would be, like, my preference to him for you to... Cause in the end, he is part of a tag team, so yes, he has like a whole year to use it, and so if he can hold on to it and let until Tucker comes back, and then they can go after the tag titles with it, perfect. But it's just like, yeah, so it's like, you know, yes, it would be unusual, but nothing's normal these days. So, so Kayla, what do you, uh, so Kayla, what do you think's gonna come out of this with Otis in the briefcase? I'm going to dream with Jolie. I can kind of see him trying to do with the um, tag teams a little bit, tag titles. Um, but I could honestly see him maybe putting that briefcase up with um, Dolph Ziggler. Maybe try to trick him like, hey, uh, I'll leave Mandy alone if you can, if you give me your briefcase, some kind of thing. Um, which in that case, I hope that's not the case. Hopefully if they do want to do a good push with Otis. Um, maybe, like you said, they, he has a year to cash it in. Because, mm-hmm. um, I mean, I think Otis might be a little bit smarter than Brock. Like he found out when Brock found out last year. Like, I have a year? You didn't tell me that. I know. So it's like, um, but yeah. Um, I hope he can hang on to it. I hope he don't do anything crazy that, you know, is going to stop him. because. Having a job as a champion can give you more money versus your peach, Mandy Rose. <laughs> I think I would choose the job over a girl. Sorry, Otis. But no, um, I hope they do do something the right way for Otis and not basically throw it to crap. And um, I don't want to see him cash it in somehow and lose it like Baron Corbin did against... I don't know who he who he went up against, but I know John Cena had him uh, lose the championship, and I was uh, I think I was. Oh, funny. it was uh, it was when Jinder Mahal had the title. Okay, I couldn't remember. I was drawing a blank, but yeah, that's right because I remember John Cena was like, "Hey, hey you just lost your briefcase." <laughs> <laughs> this was. I actually just had the perfect scenario in the mind. It's in my mind. It's like. Uh, Forgotten Sons jump New Day. New Day leave, leave, leave New Day laying in ways, and then Tucker and Otis come up, and Otis cashes in. Bam! <laughs> but hopefully that comes to fruition down the line. Alrighty. So Wednesday night, I swear it's like going into Wednesday night. They said another big announcement. I was like, wait, I can't take any more surprises. I mean. Because it's like, you had Becky's announcement. You had uh, Tuesday announcing that the IC title was getting uh, vacated. And it's like Wednesday, another big announcement. I was like, well, I can't take any more now. I can't take any more surprises. But this one was actually good. This one was actually a good announcement. So next, we actually are getting another NXT TakeOver, June 7th. Um, NXT TakeOver in your house. They're actually bringing back a classic pay-per-view but to the nxt brand and so with the whole um episode of nxt i actually saw about three possible matches coming out of that but uh kayla is there any kind of match you would probably want to book for the pay-per-view already i know one that i would love to 
book, but it may not happen yet. Um, but I do know one possible, if they don't, they'll probably go build a field of, um, one possible would probably be at TakeOver will probably be Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. Um, and then I would like for Adam Cole to finally lose that title, but you've had it long enough. Um, but I don't know anybody by hand right now who I think would take that off because I don't see Dream getting another champion shot, maybe not. Um, but if I really had to say a match that I would really love to see it take over, but it won't happen because of Damian Priest, I would really love to see Finn Balor versus Walter for the United States, not United States, United Kingdom Championship, or get that another shot with um, but, and then of course, take another one. I would love to see Karrion Cross, Scarlet versus Johnny Gargano and Candice LeRae. Actually, in regards to them, I, based on that dinner conversation and everything, I actually see those two, um, Gargano and Candice, I actually see them going up against, um, Keith Lee and Mia Yim first, because it's like, they were like, oh, yeah. mentioning them, they were mentioning them during the promo and then, uh, uh, Mia Yim started going back on them on Twitter and everything. So this would actually like bring their relationship onto TV and everything. But if I saw any kind of mixed tag match, it's like that's one that's one that I definitely see first. Yeah, I forgot about them two being together. That's right, because I did that article about them, which I need to do an updated one. But um, because Buddy Murphy and Alexa Bliss are not together no more. But. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I forgot about Keith Lee and uh, Mia Yim being together. Yeah, and then of course, there yeah, Damian Priest. He can't keep that club. He he always got to bring that that club everywhere. He needs to go anyway. on somewhere with that. But um, I know. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, Jolie. What do you think? Uh, anything you see coming out for NXT Takeover? Takeover. I can see Champa versus Karrion Cross. I can see Mei Yim and Keith Lee versus the horrible promo masters because that promo gave me a fucking headache. What was with the whole like zooming in? The dude, no, stop trying to mess with your effects on on your movie maker, dude. Just just switch it over to black and white and not add the dramatic shaking effect that could induce seizures. <laughs> um, I could definitely... That match? Okay. I would like to see... Triple Threat with EO, Rhea, and Charlotte. Yeah. And I do like the Finn Balor versus Damian Priest. As for Adam Cole, kind of want to see possibly a dark horse, but I'm trying to think of that dark horse. Please don't say Cameron Grimes. No. Ugh. Sorry, I'm just not a fan of him. (laughs) You know what? You know what? You know what? He had an amazing match against Johnny Gargano. He may have come up short against Keith Lee. Let Diam- Dominic Dijakovic go for the NXT championship. I would be good. Oh, wait, no, 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 no. Dexter Loomis. Dexter Loomis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, because he's like been butting in lately to UE Business. Yeah, so I would definitely like to see maybe Dexter Loomis somehow involved in a match. Uh, oh, health. Make it a war games. Dexter Loomis, Dream, Dijakovic, and a partner of their choosing versus Undisputed Era. There we go. There you go. <laughs> you know, you but, totally just read my mind. <laughs> I honestly, I love when Undisputed Era is in a war games. They put on such a fantastic match. Oh, also maybe add Riddle versus Thatcher in a submission match. That'd be a good one. Yeah, because yeah, those two guys definitely haven't finished business after last Wednesday. 
Yeah, so, um, yeah, I apologize about the brain farts. It is 10.39 at night. Uh, my fat ass went to exercise. <laughs> it didn't turn out that well. Oh, but, yeah, no, I think, think I'm glad that they're having that before, um, and the following week is Backlash, so... So it's, at least we're going to have two weekends of, you know, pay-per-view style wrestling. Definitely. But did you guys hear the rumor? What rumor? That SummerSlam might not be canceled in Boston. What? There is a possibility. They're still trying to work it out. It has not been officially canceled yet. Oh. Uh, but unfortunately... I think they'll be doing... They want a live audience. Yeah, that, that part I know. Um, however, due to the rules of engagement for this pandemic, um, there is no proper way to actually do this. So, like, who, 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 do, who do they pick and choose, you know? So, I'm here thinking... This is what they do. They refund everybody back their SummerSlam money tickets. Everything's refunded, right? Mm-hmm. And then it's a lottery system. You get a, Everybody gets a specific code that bought tickets. Not anybody that's going to buy tickets. These are for the people that specifically already bought tickets. And then they get a code and then it's a free for all. It's it's you whoever gets in gets in and they're limited to one ticket. Yeah. Uh and I think that's that's the only fair way to possibly do it unless you just put everybody in a fucking cage and tell them to fight. I mean, if they have a chance to still put SummerSlam in front of a live audience, that would be great. If it's in Boston where it was originally be at, I mean, that would be awesome as well. They would probably I have to move it to maybe even in a smaller of arena than TD Garden. I know there's some around there. That, that's my husband because he's originally from Boston. And, yeah, it's like like you were like some kind of like lottery or drawing system because I know they're not going to be able to pack the place, but even if they can have fans like sparing like around, give it like some – like almost a little bit of normalcy. It's like, ba- it's like baby steps and everything. But as long as – I mean, as long as they can do – this some type of way safely and, and yeah and I'm I'm all for it. Oh I'm I would definitely love to be a part of a live audience again. Honestly I can't wait for um when we're told we're going back to work at the stadium. I can't wait till I'm told that I'm actually going back to work. That's unfortunately gonna be a little while for me because I'm technically a very, 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 very non-essential worker. Um, so it's just right now very, 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 very frustrating. But that's beside the point. And um, yeah, I mean, at least we still have wrestling, and this week we have NASCAR coming back. But um, you know. They're saying sports are back. Motherfuckers, WWE, AEW, and Impact have mm-hmm. been wrestling and taping shows this entire time. Yeah. Sports has already been there. Just because you sit in a car and drive left for 400 miles doesn't make you any less of an athlete than the people that sacrifice their bodies in that ring. Anywho. Anywho, we've gone way off base here, but it's all good. <laughs> no, that's just something that, like, that really honestly pissed me off when I was watching the news. Like, sports are back. The fuck? What do you call wrestling? What, because Trump... <laughs> seem to have intervened it's not considered the hell is wrong with you if they're talking about 
if they're talking about Becky Lynch's pregnancy announcement um, on the, on the ESPN and Roman Reigns pulling out of WrestleMania, it belongs. So people oh, yeah. can just shut the hell up. Amen. All right. All right. Friday night. Friday night. So, sweet. <laughs> so we talked about Charlotte earlier popping all up, all, popping up all over the place. And lo and behold, she put, they made her announcement that she was going to be on Friday Night Smackdown. First thought in my mind, I'm like going, what the hell for? I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's like, what, what do you think? She's going to do like an extra ratings draw or something like that? I don't know. It's just... I'm like, wait, she doesn't need to be all over the place. But Kayla, she comes she comes to Friday Night Smackdown speaking a little bit of truth to one Sasha Banks. Yep, she has, actually, because I don't know how many times here lately Bailey's basically put her underneath the bus. Um, I do admit I'm happy for Bailey, you know, that she's finally, you know, accomplished a lot with the SmackDown Women's title. Um, but to be logic, if it wasn't for Sasha Banks, Bailey probably would have lost at Money in the Bank against Tamina. So, um, Charlotte actually spoke the truth. I do have to say, um, Sasha is living in the shadows of Bailey right now. And like we've seen it multiple times during the week, Sasha's ready to snap. It's just in the moment when. Because I mean, her facial expression says it all, her actions say it all. And even that, just, just that discouraged look she had when Charlotte said it. Like, you're right. Oh, yeah. You're right. You know, and she's. As a matter of fact, I don't know when they're going to pull it, but they just need to pull it because um, right now, here lately, Bailey's had her push. Charlotte's had, obviously, her pushes. Becky has got her push um, with the horsewoman. It's Sasha's bank, um, Sasha Banks' turn. At least give her another title run. Maybe, you know, break her record. I think it's eight days she held the Raw Championship, I think. Um, but Charlotte spoke the truth. Um, so hopefully we can see Sasha just letting it go real soon because she don't need to be li- She's too good to be living in the shadows of Bailey. Haircut seems to get shorter and shorter every week. Nothing wrong with short hair, <laughs> but it's like <laughs> by the rate she's going, I don't know. There's not going to be nothing left, but <laughs> She actually had right. to ask her fiance for permission because he likes long hair. I read an article about that. But, um. Uh, okay, screw, screw that. Sorry. It, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, so, um, that's all I have to say, I think. Yeah. If something <laughs> else comes to me, I'll pop in, but I think that's it. I'm drawing a blank right now. <laughs> nah, it's okay. I mean, because, like, we rarely record this late and everything, but. No, it's like when I was listening to the when I was listening to Charlotte speak uh, to Sasha and everything. We've been waiting weeks and weeks for this story, for this uh, blow up between Sasha and Bailey to happen. And I'm listening to Charlotte like spew the facts and the gospel to. Sasha and everything, and I'm like, going, okay, is Charlotte the one who's going to be kicking this? Help Sasha getting a like get it, getting Sasha a wake up call to kick this in gear because it's like you can even tell it on her face. Sasha didn't say anything, but you can tell it on her face. It's like Sasha's. I mean, that Charlotte was speaking the truth, and it's like, hello, I want the boss back. She's been saying she's always the boss, but I I have not seen the boss like kicking ass the way that we know that she can. I, no, I your, you, mic, Jolie, go your, ahead. your mic cut out. Sorry, I didn't hear you. Okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, no, your, mic, your mic's been a little bit wonky for a, fa- for a minute, so I was like, uh, okay. I can't. Oh, no. Go ahead. All right. Just like you, when they said Charlotte was coming to SmackDown, my first thought was, oh, Christ, here come the haters. 
Then it was like, why wasn't she on Raw? Like, you know, there, this, it would have been whatever. Okay, so she's going to SmackDown. Fine. I guess I'll tune in. And then SmackDown kills you with that Becky video. And then here come the rest of the horsemen. So it was like kind of beautiful timing. Yeah. And then, you know, Charlotte just drops so much fucking truth on to Sasha. And it's just like, in my mind, stir that shit, baby. Stir it up. <laughs> just, just, just get under the skin just a little bit. Let the wound faster. It'll explode eventually. So now we have a match. This next upcoming SmackDown versus Sasha versus Charlotte. Or no, not Sasha. Bailey versus Charlotte. Bailey and you know, Sasha. So Sasha is going to show up. Mm hmm. And it's like, what happened to Sasha? Ever since her fight with Becky at Hell in a Cell, she kind of got neutered. <laughs> I'm not wrong. So it's like, okay, what happened? All right, well, are you playing the long game, the mind games? What? It's, you know, you're, 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 Sasha's on thanking Vince on Twitter or playing with her dog or doing this and doing that. And, but we see her. I we want the boss. We see her staring at the title. We saw her mouth for now. So it's coming. And I think the fact that Charlotte being put on a SmackDown was probably one of the best things that they could have done. Because if there's anybody that can get under the skin of Sasha Banks, it is the egotistical queen. Of course. I love when she, she she plays the she plays her role to a T and people get mad, people blah blah blah. Just I they I guess people don't again, again, they don't understand storytelling. They're a bunch of hypocrites. They want the storytelling. They don't want the storytelling. They want it to come faster. No story goes he got the princess the end. She got the title <laughs> the end. No, there's a whole long list of trials and tribulations you got to get to to build up to make it suspenseful, and this is what's happening. Yeah, you've got you got your antagonist and your protagonist, and right now you don't know which one's which because they're both technically heels. So you could have your one antagonist, your two antagonists. Right now, you got, basically what you got is two antagonists. The one antagonist finally flips and becomes the protagonist, a.k.a. the hero. It's the beautiful storytelling that leads up to hopefully the final result at SummerSlam. Charlotte being on SmackDown, Charlotte being the one to get under both of their skins is just amazing. And again, congratulations to Bailey for now being the longest reigning champion on both brands. Yeah. Go get pregnant. <laughs> oh, I said don't no, get yet, pregnant. Not. Okay, I was going to say. <laughs> thank God, thank God you, you, you uh, clarified that because I was like, say, do we really need two pregnant champions right now? No, but it's like, oh. Yeah, it's like I'm, wait, I'm waiting for this to happen, and who knows, we might see the blow up next week because of all this. So, I actually, it's like I'm one of those people. that's like, yeah, I down Charlotte at first because like overexposed and everything, but in the end, you're right. It's like she does a lot of good as far as like storytelling, putting people over, and in this case, stirring the shit out of this pot that we need. Whew! Can we get this? Can we get the blow up to happen finally, please? I'm just okay. So. Kind of wrap it up. Not really like a justice chair type thing, but I want to ask each of y'all going back to like we started this with Becky, let's end this with Becky. So, Kayla, if you had to predict, how early do you see her coming back? Knowing how she was in the ring, knowing how she loves what she does wrestling, how she loves the fans. Um, I don't see her coming back. Before WrestleMania, 
but the earliest I could actually see her coming back would probably be WrestleMania, and the, maybe the latest would probably be maybe Money in the Bank. But like I said, I don't see her coming back before WrestleMania. Or she could come back to the no, it would be too soon for the Rumble. So oh, no. I think the so oh, no. the earliest I think the earliest yeah. So the earliest I think I can see Becky coming back would probably be WrestleMania. Maybe SummerSlam being the latest, I would say. Change Money in the Bank. So anywhere probably between WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, if not SummerSlam, the latest. Depending how well she's got to come back and uh, pop Seth back in the place will be the question. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm thinking Summer. I'm th- I'm thinking SummerSlam because it's like she's doing December. Uh, yeah, it's like with the due date, first few months, getting back in the ring shape and everything. The earliest I'm thinking would be SummerSlam. SummerSlam of uh, 2021. Jolie. Maurice took about five months to get in ring shape, and she's not as dedicated as Becky is. Mm-hmm. So I say cut that down to three months. I could see Becky back by wow. WrestleMania, but not performing at WrestleMania. I can see a match between Shayna Baszler and Asuka for the title. Um, regardless who wins, Becky music hits that arena goes ape shit <laughs> probably one of the biggest pops in a while mm-hmm. she comes down to the ring she points at that title says neither of you pinned me I'm coming back for that mm-hmm. and just walks away there you go I mean in the end once when- one thing I didn't men- mention earlier and everything is if if she were to get, I mean, it's like we knew sooner or later she would have to drop the title. I'm glad she was able to do it this way on her terms, except in not losing a match or anything like, like that. So if this would if this were a way for her to drop the title and everything, but this was the best way to do it because it's like it's on her terms and she could come back and like stay and like. Nobody pinned me. I never lost the title. And so it's, she's kind of gone back into playing what's rightfully hers. I think that, honestly, again, like you said, this is the best way that uh, she could have written the end of this chapter for the title, for her story at the moment. Um, and if what I read is true, that Asuka had zero clue that this was going to be what's happening. I'm glad that Becky handpicked Asuka. I think that, you know, all the bitching that we've heard that Asuka is being buried, that, you know, Asuka was used as a pawn to prop up Charlotte. Asuka, you know, keeps losing. You know, she lost to Shayna. And... It's just like, you guys bitch when she loses, and now you're bitching when she wins and has the title. It, it's, it's, it, it blows my mind. It honestly does, because this woman has given everything to NXT, to SmackDown, to Raw, and when she finally gets the accolade of being the second Grand Slam champion, at which... Uh, Bailey, you did say you were the only one. Wrong. Wrong. Ding dong. Wrong. Ding dong. Wrong. <laughs> um, uh, now, now there's a second one. Yep. And I mean, I do love the fact that you have uh, two women of um, minority status mm-hmm. and women of color as your first two Grand Slam champions. So that actually makes me happy. Um, but yeah, no, the fact that, that Asuka got it the way that she did, the way that Becky was able to write out the end of this chapter, um, it does make me excited about when she comes back. Will she come back full-time? Will she be just a part-timer? 
Um, you know, if Seth continues to wrestle now until she, till he goes on paternity leave, will he take time off while she comes back to the ring? You know, there's a lot of things that you know, that can factor into this. You know, personally, I think if she gives up nine months now, he gives up nine months later. It's just fair. I mean, this is the second Irish person that he's taken out of the ring. <laughs> so I actually did bring, I did see that and everything as far as like the second Irish man to uh, kind of give up a title because of stuff. Because <laughs> they, they, they brought up the end. Yeah. But yeah, um, so this, this was the best way that they could have done it. And haters are going to hate. People are going to find a way to bitch. And mm-hmm. and the jester will call them out on it every fucking time. Oh yeah. Uh, oh, I see. No doubt that I have no doubt in my mind that that'll happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but in the end, congratulations, Becky. Congratulations, Seth. We can't wait to see what happens in y'all's next chapter. And of course, <laughs> boy or girl. We we definitely see another generation of wrestling coming to coming to fruition. And if oh, I do well. not see a legacy onesie for that child, Miss Charlotte, Miss Sasha, Miss Daly, I'm gonna be severely disappointed with you, Natty. You too, bitch. You better give him a legacy one. <laughs> that child better have multiple legacy onesies. You know, come on now. Exactly. <laughs> oh man. All uh, right. That's all we have time for on this episode of The Queen's Takeover. Thank you so much for joining us, and tune in next time as The Takeover continues. Y'all have a good one. <laughs>